name is Carrie, and we are so excited to have you with us here today as we celebrate your exploration of balance. In this year's Learning in Concert program, we explored balance in music and balance in ecosystems. To begin our concert, I'm going to bring out our music director. You remember Yaniv from his video where he introduced Bach's two symbiotic melodies supported each other like the symbiotic relationship between the crocodile and the Egyptian plover, right? Excuse me, Terry. Terry. I just started, you quiet. I just started too. <laughs> So, um, I would just like to say that I still would like to play the crocodile melody. Instead, Peter stole it from me. Steal it? Are you talking? No. Can I get started? Uh, um, I think Yanid is supposed to come up, who also took the crocodile melody away from me. <laughs> Alright, well... Hi everyone, it's just so good to see you. Thank you very much for the big welcome. Terry, I've heard that these kids have done some amazing work with you and our musicians this year. That's right, Yanni, and we're going to be celebrating their work through this entire concert. So, how do you want to start? We are going to perform the festive overture by Shostakovich. This piece is very exciting and features so many different parts of the orchestra with the strings, the brass, the woodwinds, and the percussion. Parts of the orchestra that all our students explored with you in the classroom, right? That's right. Let's go. Okay. Thank you. 
here we learn that balance occurs when different parts work together to support each other. We explored balance in an ecosystem commonly found in our area, a New England salt marsh ecosystem. In this year's program, we explored the living or biotic parts of the salt marsh and saw how each living thing had an important job or niche to support balance in the ecosystem. We also explored different musical parts to see how each has an important job or niche to create balance in a piece of music. Supporting from the bottom of our music is the bass line, just like the microbes support the plants from the bottom of our salt marsh. The plants also support so many living things, just like our accompaniment supports the melodies in the music. And finally, the melody is the star or main focus in our music, just like each animal in the salt marsh is the focus of our attention. In the classrooms, we explored the salt marsh using the NBSO uh, salt marsh model. You place animals into the model to explore different food webs and the interactions among the marsh's many living parts. Each classroom also experienced a disruption to the balance in your salt marsh and had to brainstorm ways to repair the marsh and bring it back to a state of balance. Each class then orchestrated a piece of music based on Hockabell's canon to represent all the living parts of their salt marsh ecosystem with musical parts that had the same niche. The students selected their instruments using the range board to discover which instrument could play within the specific range of each melody. Here students from North Elementary set the range for their melody so that they could select the appropriate instrumentation. Well, today, we're going to celebrate you. We will hear from students who problem solve to repair the imbalance in the salt marsh and work to orchestrate their musical parts to imitate the same relationships in the ecosystem. But first, the orchestra is going to perform this piece by Bach. In this piece, you will hear the music grow literally from the ground up, beginning with the bass line, our bottom support in the music. The bass line is the lowest sounds in the music and provides support for all the other musical parts. Watch the screen as the bass line instruments are shown down in the soil. In the beginning of the piece, you'll hear the bass line performed very strongly by the bass trombone, the tuba, the cello, and the bass. And listen as this bass line continues to repeat throughout the music over and over again. This powerful bass line will be the strong support for all the other musical parts, just like the microbes are a strong support for all the plants in our ecosystem. Each time the bass line repeats, a different group of instruments will perform above it. First, we will hear the clarinet and the French horn melodies supported by the bass line. Then the piccolo, flute, oboe, violin, and viola will perform above the bass line. And as the piece continues, more and more instruments are support supported by the bass line. Wow, how many, of, how many of you are playing this part? Wow, wow. Okay, let's listen.
explore one of the salt marsh disruptions experienced in one of our... Hey, Terry, what's a disruption? <laughs> um, Travis is a disruption. <laughs> So I noticed you spent a lot of time today talking about salt marshes, but you have neglected to mention one really important part. No, no. And I think everyone here knows what that is, and that would be my teacher. Can, we, um, can you uh, remind me his name? I am so sorry. What is going on? Sorry, sorry. Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> well, actually, hold on. What is going on is that we're talking about my teacher, and I'm going to let the kids from Cardi Academy tell me who my teacher is. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. Yes! Go ahead and say it again. Oh, come on, better than that. Together. That's it. That's my teacher. So, I'm really glad you asked what's going on, because Mr. Cabanini and I have been very busy. We went on a concert tour of the whole world, and we took pictures. Do you want to see them, Terry? No. 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 Do you guys want to see the pictures? Alright. So, uh, first, we went to uh, Hawaii, and we performed in the Blaisdell Concert Hall. Mr. Cabanini's in my hand. He's a little, he's tiny. Um, so that was fun. And then we also went to Paris, and we performed in the Philharmonie de Paris, which was really, really fun. Um, so actually, uh, Mr. Crabinini told me that he was going to be in the audience today. So um, Peter and Alicia, can you come help me look for him? No. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Uh, right. So we have to come look for Mr. Crabinini. Can you guys help? Right? Come right. on. Right. Look, is he under your seats? Look, right. Travis, are you trying to get me trouble here? Yes. Sorry. Come on, Peter. Where is he? Peter. Has anyone found him? Do you find him? Is he under your seats? Has anyone found him? from the audience. Hi, Mr. Crabinini. Oh, we have him right here. <laughs> Peter, have you found him? Do you have him? Where is Mr. Crabinini? He's right here? Where? Where? They don't have anything. Travis, Alicia, Peter. We haven't found him. Do you know where he is? He's under the seat. Oh, got it. Travis, really? Whoa. Okay, I guess Travis, Mr. Cabanini lied to me. He's you, not here. Are you done? Are I'm you done. done? No. Peter, did you find him? Where? Wow, that's awesome. Peter. I'm so happy he came today. Are you done? Yeah. For good? No. If you guys find him, let me know. Oh, please. Alright. Wow. Some how many Sometimes a road is built in or near a salt marsh that cuts off the flow of salty ocean water in and out of the marsh. Now this tidal restriction can lead to many changes in the marsh and many disruptions to the balance. Here are a couple of pictures to show how something as simple as a road can cause problems in a salt marsh. So when the tidal flow is disrupted by the road, the healthy salt marsh cordgrass will die and fresh water of Phragmites will take over the marsh. Let's listen to students from the Campbell School and Hathaway School describe the problem in the salt marsh and the idea that they had to bring the salt marsh back to a state of balance. The street um, blocks across the water to go to the marsh. You can just make a bridge or like a big hole here, and then the salt water can come here, and all the animals can be all alive. Great solution. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. By changing the road into a bridge, these students were able to find a good solution to restore the balance to the salt marsh. With the salt marsh balance restored, let's hear what that ecosystem sounds like with musical parts that share the same supportive relationships. These next classrooms created a Pachelbel orchestration that combined musical parts for their ecosystem. The microbes, or the bottom support in the soil, is represented by the baseline, the bottom support in our music. Another support in the ecosystem is the cord grass, 
which is represented by the accompaniment. And the heron, the fiddle and crabs, and those little fish called mama chods were each represented by three different melodies. Students from the Fort Barton Elementary School, where are you guys? Right here. They orchestrated a piece of music to show balance in their ecosystem. They chose a uh, bass for their bass line, the string instruments for their accompaniment, and using the range board, they orchestrated the flute, the French horn, and the viola for their three salt marsh animals. Let's listen to their salt marsh orchestration. Let's check out some of the parts. Mozart has six melodies introduced during the piece. So that you guys can keep track of them. I'm going to place a salt marsh animal next to each melody, okay? So we're going to have one melody will be for our egret, next melody will be the heron, the third one will be our raccoon, the fourth one oh, is the fiddler crab, and the fifth one is the mama chugs, and the sixth melody will be represented by those little, um, those little grass shrimp. By the end of the music, you're going to hear all these melodies play at the same time. And during that part of the music, I want you to do me a favor. Imagine if one of these little melodies was taken away. Your ears would hardly even notice that one melody was gone, right? With all the other musical parts still in the music, the balance would remain. Just like our ecosystem with many living parts or biodiversity, a declining population of one living organism would not disrupt the balance. Let's listen. Thank you. 
experienced another disruption in the, the balance of their salt marsh. When a house was built near the marsh and the owner used some fertilizer on the lawn, some of the fertilizer ended up in the marsh when the rainwater carried it into the water. Here, a student describes the impact of fertilizer on the balance in a salt marsh. When they built the house on the marsh, they decided to use fertilizer to make the lawn be better. better. that combine musical parts for their, work, their ecosystem. The micro bass line supports the court grass accompaniment, which then supports the three animal melodies of our egret, the raccoon, and those little mama chogs. In this video, a student from Ranger Elementary describes the supports of the ecosystem and the supports in their musical parts. Deep, deep into the swamp and has gotten to the water that is just below the surface. 
None of the other creatures that live here can do that, but they all benefit by what the alligator has done. So during the dry season, when there's very little rain and very little water, without the alligators digging these trenches, many of the animals there could not survive. In the next piece by Aaron Copland, we will hear a keystone melody. This melody is so important to maintaining the balance in the music that if we took it away, the whole balance of the music would fall apart. Let's listen to this keystone melody played by the clarinet. is repeated over and over again in different parts of the orchestra and as they play let's look at some video from parts for to see the American alligator and the many different living things that it supports. Since 
purple crabs like to eat cord grass, too many purple crabs can disrupt the balance of the salt marsh, eating away all the cord grass. Let's listen to some solution brainstormed by students at St. Margaret's School. Um, there could be certain days that the fishermen can go fishing. You could keep the older ones because the younger ones have a longer life to live. In the eggs, you should keep them protected so that there can be a bigger population of uh, blue crabs. Wow, great solutions. Give them a round of applause. That was fantastic. the effect of another crab population, the green crab. Now these green crabs were thought to be a problem too, but now researchers are rethinking the green crab as they are helping to bring the Cape Cod purple crabs eating under control. You see, the green crabs are slightly larger and a little scary to the purple crabs. So the purple crabs end up spending more of their day hiding and less of their day eating. Exactly. With the salt marsh balance restored, let's hear what this ecosystem sounds like. These next classrooms created a Paco Bell orchestration that combined musical parts for their ecosystem. The micro bass line supported the cord grass accompaniment that supported three melodies for our blue crab, our purple crab, and our green crab. In this video, a student from Asawakset Elementary School describes how the salt marsh orchestration would have sounded if they had never fixed the problem of the overpopulation of the purple crab. It would have been bad and it would have been too noisy. What would have been too noisy? The purple crab's metal melody because mel mel there's too many purple crabs. And now there's the you know, blue crabs and the blue crab melody. And the uh, green crab, you wouldn't be able to hear it. And there would be no um, micros or cord grass because the purple crabs kept eating it. So that would basically just be the purple crabs on them. Wow, excellent job. Can I have a round of applause? Thank you for the great uh, solutions to restore the balance. Let's hear what this ecosystem sounds like. This classroom from Hassan said created a pop bell orchestration that had the uh, bass for the bass line, the strings performed the accompaniment, and they orchestrated the violin, flute, and trombone for their three different crab melodies. Let's listen. I do 
you share those willingly, Terry? Yes. Travis, this is great stuff. I changed my mind, put me back on the social media. Oh, you want to be my Instagram friend? Yeah, sure. All right. That's fine. It's okay. from a local business traveled into the marsh from rain runoff. Even a small amount of oil pollution can affect the uh, balance of the salt marsh. Some classrooms discuss the idea of adding more plants to their communities to help soak up pollutants before they reach a pond, a lake, or a salt marsh. Here, a student from our sister school <laughs> describes a solution called greenscaping and shows how her school brought greenscaping right out their front door. Greenscaping is taking something that's unhealthy for our environment, like um, tar, and replacing it into like something that's healthy for it, like grass and plants and flowers. All right, so this is an example of greenscaping. Um, this whole thing used to be pavement, but now under the snow it's wood chips. Um, we built flower boxes, and there was um, a bunch of flowers over here. Yeah, I think it would be a really big difference. Yeah, it's really great. <laughs> created a Papago orchestration that combined musical parts for their ecosystem. The micro bass line supported the chord brass accompaniment, which supported the three melodies representing our mama chugs, the fiddler crab, and that red fox. We have a student from Westport describes the impact of oil pollution on the animals in the salt marsh. It was just unbalanced because there would be no be red fox melody, there wouldn't be a fiddler crab melody, it wouldn't be a mama chuck melody, and all the instruments would be on rounds, so it wouldn't make a good piece of music. Let's listen to their orchestration put back to a good state of balance. <laughs> Monkeys in the zoo when I come. 
You absolutely can. You should probably bring a friend when you come. I can bring a, fr a friend? Sure. Okay, so I will bring my good friend. <laughs> Two good friends. I wasn't your first choice. <laughs> Peter and Tony. I mean, Travis. Travis. <laughs> wow. Let's let's listen to this magnificent piece by Tchaikovsky. Just like the Gildy's monkeys get different support throughout the year, both in the trees and on the ground. Listen as the accompaniment support keeps changing, supporting the melody in many different ways.